Hi, this is Leslie. Hope you're well. And welcome to another update on the mother of all bubbles. Yes, we're talking about the real estate market, the property market. And I'm going to explain to you what I think is going to potentially happen, what surprises and potential disasters are waiting for the London property market, and also how you can use the methods I'm going to show you to other markets too. So in fact, you're going to learn how you can apply everything I'm going to show you, most of the strategies to other markets, other property markets. So not just London, but also, for example, Australia, Canada, Germany, whatever you like in America. So as I'm sure you're probably aware, in a previous video, I said there was a lot of research done by uh, many experts that they found that London has been in a bubble now for some time. And again, before Brexit occurred, you can see this is the London property market right here. And they found, in fact, some research by UBS found that uh, London property market has been in a heated bubble for some time. And by the way, guys, this bubble is slowly bursting, but it hasn't completely burst just yet. But I'm gonna show you in a few moments what happens, what could potentially happen if indeed that bubble eventually bursts. We're gonna take a look at this chart in just a few moments. Now, before I do that though, let me just first of all mention this. In the last few months, I myself have been looking around London, doing my own research. It's always a good idea, guys, that you know, uh, go to the area you're interested in when you're doing property investing and actually research the area really well. So for example, my main area of research has been Blackheath or Greenwich, which to my mind is a beautiful area of London and I just, I just love this area. So I've been looking at properties in this area and you know, there's a lot of beautiful, wonderful, um, you know, investment properties. And again, these are properties I looked at not to live in, but, but as an investment, in other words, buy to let. So once I did this research, here's what I found, and I wanna share it with you. Uh, actually, before I come to this chart, uh, and before I actually discuss what this is showing to us, let me first of all show you this. So obviously, uh, the estate agents, real estate prices have been hit already. have been starting to drop, as you can see here from these headlines here. So house prices in the UK have, begin, have began to drop. So we're slowly beginning to see this bubble bursting. Now, before we take a look at the chart of the house prices, I want to show you an interesting article. This is actually one of the most important articles I think uh, there is right now uh, on the house prices in the UK. And you can find this in the Financial Times newspaper. I'll put the link for you in the description box. So a lot of experts sat down and they tried to figure out what Brexit uh, could mean for the UK. In other words, uh, if the UK leaves the European Union with or without a deal, what could it mean? And you can see they put a bunch of scenarios here, but here's what's interesting. Uh, when you go down this over here, they found that if the UK exits the EU without a deal, the most likely scenario, get this over here, is they predict that the most likely scenario for the UK is a 47% drop in house prices. Now I gotta tell you, that shocked me when I saw that. I mean, I was, I was thinking more along the lines of 30%, maybe 25%, but not 47%. So the experts predict that if the UK leaves the European Union without a deal, the probability of a 47% drop in house prices in the UK is 80%, four out of five score probability, all right? In other words, what they're saying is, uh, what we're gonna go through in the UK is something along the same lines as Japan, when the Japan asset bubble burst back in 91. Now, let me just say this. I think even if the UK leaves the European Union with a deal, in other words, if we have a Brexit with a deal, I don't think the odds of the UK escaping some kind of property market disaster uh, is very good. I, I still think the UK property market is very much heated in a bubble. So let me just talk to you about that. So we're gonna talk about this chart in just a few moments. And I'm gonna show you why even if the UK leaves the European Union with a deal, it doesn't make a difference. So first of all, what I would highly recommend is get a chart of the property prices in your country. Now, again, you can apply this to other countries too, not just the UK or London. You can, if you live in Germany, whatever, America, Canada, wherever you are, what you wanna do is get a chart like this that shows the property prices for the last 10, 20 years. Now, if you live in the UK, it's very easy how you can get this. I'll put the link for you in the description box. But bottom line is you wanna to go, to uh, to to go to this website and what you wanna do here is when you go to this website, just select the area of London or, or the UK that you're interested in. So here it is, for example, for London right there. Once you put it in there, then you come and get this page like this. And make sure you set the settings to get as much data as possible, at least 20 years of data. So this is the London property prices you can see over the last 20 years. By the way, one important thing I wanna to mention to you is this, sometimes estate agents, I found this out myself by the way, sometimes estate agents will say to you, well, they, what they will do is they will just show you the last 
maybe the last year of house prices, the last maybe couple of years of house prices. And they'll say to you something like this, oh, there's nothing to worry about, bro, because look at it, property prices are flat. Look, they've just been going sideways for the last uh, year or two. So nothing to worry about, bro. Uh, no, sorry guys, that is absolute nonsense. It is absolutely true that if you just take a look at the last couple of years, it looks sideways. It looks up and down, oscillation, sideways range. That's true. Although it's a kind of kind of a bearish tilt to it. Let me just say that. Bottom line is this: that is absolute nonsense because you got to take a look at the overall picture for the last 10, 20 years. You want to know what were the house prices before the last major recession? For example, the 2007 before the 2007 market crash. You want to know what the lows were in 2009. You want to know what the, the highs and lows were back 20 years ago, like the year 2000, 2001. These are important things to know. And certainly you want to know what the most recent peak was. But what I'm going to do is this. Take a screenshot of this. What you want to do is take a screenshot of that, put it into Paint. Uh, so what I'm using here is Microsoft Paint. Very simple. So the reason I'm using Microsoft Paint is because obviously there aren't chart softwares out there where you can do chart analysis on property prices. So you're going to have to do some manual work yourself. But let me show you this. Everything I'm going to show you here is very simple to do. I've done it before in a previous video, but actually it's very simple to do. So what you want to do is uh, get a screenshot of this, put it into Microsoft Paint or whatever paint you have if you're using Apple, for example. So what you want to do here is grab a line. So grab a line. Uh, I'm going to color it red, and I'm going, to I'm, going to, I'm going to connect this high from 2007 to the high we made in 2000. As you can see, the highs we made back in 2016. That's about it. If you can get a good fit, that would be great. And, I'm, and actually, make a, make a very large line, okay? And see if you can get a good connection between them. Okay, there you go. Okay, that's one line done. Then the second thing you want to do is draw an exact parallel line to this, an exact parallel line like so. All right. Make, it, make sure it's long. There it is, it's parallel. Then drag it and put it at the bottom, right there. Okay, connect, connect the lows right there. There you go. So now what we have in technical analysis and chart analysis is what is called a channel. So we can see the price is channeling between these two levels. By the way, we're not done yet. The next thing you want to do is draw another line. I'm going to make it a thinner line, green one, and put it right bang in the middle. Uh, so draw an exact parallel line like so. And then what you want to do is drag that again, put it in the middle. Okay, put it right in the middle, like so. Now, why is that important? Why do we need this middle line? Because that's what's called a mean average. So this tells you the mean average of the house prices uh, in this channel. You can see right there. So right now you can see we are in London, bang right below the mean average. So that is a good statistical tool to know the mean average on the chart. Now, we're not done yet. The next thing we're going to do is draw another line. This one I'm going to make blue. And then what you want to do is drag this blue line and make it equidistant from the green line. So an exact distance from that green line away from the red line. Okay, so that's about it. So just to be clear, what we're doing here is um, measuring the distance from the green line to the red line. So those of you who are familiar with statistical analysis, you know this is what's called standard deviation. By the way, draw another parallel line like so, and again, equidistant from the green line, like so. All right, that should do the trick. There we go. So what we have here is a two standard deviation line. Okay, that blue line is a two, is a two standard deviation from the mean, okay? So bottom line is this. Uh, if What does this mean, by the way, you're probably thinking? Well, it means that if property prices in the UK were to continue dropping, let's say they continue to drop down here to the red line, we've come to the bottom of this channel. Here's what I would say. Anything below that red line, so if property prices fall below that red line, and especially if they fall back to the blue line, the two standard deviation line, that actually gives us a pretty good idea that property prices have become undervalued. In other words, anything really, any prices below the red line, and especially if they come to the blue line here, uh, shows to us that we're reaching an area where prices are becoming undervalued. Now, that may sound quite shocking, you might think. Even at these prices, they may look rather expensive. But bottom line is, uh, statistically, prices below that red line, and especially if they come to the blue line, are considered to be fair value or indeed undervalued. Uh, by the way, Fibonacci analysis, a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement would put it actually more or less at the blue line as well, which puts it at the 400,000 level mark. 
By the way, let me just say this, that if the prediction made by the Financial Times experts uh, that you just saw a few minutes ago, if they're correct, then property prices might actually drop down much further to the 2007 highs near 300,000, maybe even lower than that. But I personally would much rather keep things a bit more realistic and actually a bit more conservative. So I'm not actually predicting anything as, you know, as, as extreme as that yet. But let's just see what happens. But bottom line is that if the Financial Times article is correct, then the price drop could be so significant uh, below the standard deviation line that might actually come down to the 2007 highs near the 300,000 level mark. So bottom line is this, you know, this is a good technique you can use to understand uh, where prices are and where they might come down to. Uh, so in other words, if property prices, and again, it's an if, if property prices were to come down further lower, these are the levels of support we can actually identify where they might, where price may hold these levels and they might actually bounce off these levels. All right. Uh, one thing I should say is this. I know there's probably many property investors watching this video right now. Maybe there's some real estate agents watching this video right now, and they're probably laughing their heads off. They're probably thinking, oh, no way this property, no way the property prices are going to fall. Um, you know, they're going to continue going up higher and higher. Let, let me just say something to those people right there. Firstly, let me say this. Their main reason, the main reason why property prices skyrocketed so much in the last five to seven years is because foreign investors have been piling their money into the UK. All right. And they've been making house prices in the UK go into a bubble and become extremely expensive for average people in the UK to buy a home. The average person in the UK cannot buy a home. They cannot afford it. It's ridiculously expensive. And this bubble has not yet properly burst. So anyone out there who is so deluded to think that property prices are not in a bubble and they're just going to continue going up. Well, let me just say to this property prices can only go up based on nothing but fluff. All right. There's nothing but fluff, absolute nonsense, keeping the prices up right now. The demand is shrinking and demand will continue to shrink as we head into the post Brexit situation. And bottom line is foreign buyers are not interested. Foreign buyers have lost interest in the UK. And especially if the UK, if things get worse, we could see property prices eventually come down to reality. And I think coming down to the undervalued uh, regions that I've mentioned here. All right, guys, I hope this video has helped you. If it has, please give it a thumbs up. And guys, also let me mention that a lot of details are in the description box. For example, if you're interested in uh, a good mortgage broker, a fantastic mortgage broker, uh, then I can also mention Mark Scott to you. Mark Scott, a fantastic guy in the UK. His details are in the description box as well or in the link you see here. And guys, I look forward to seeing you guys in the next update. Thank you very much. Bye for now.